We have now created a basic IKFK chain. I have made one change to the rig. I've replaced the blast node with a delete joint node. The blast node is an expensive node to use, and the delete joint node should be more appropriate to this context. The joint has been deleted using a group based off the name attribute. We're now going to turn this into an HDA, and we'll expose the controls so that they can be used without entering the HDA. This HDA will be a SOP level HDA. It is possible to do this at an object level. At the moment, it will take quite a lot of Python scripting to achieve that, however. I select all the nodes in the network, and I turn them into a subnet. I'll call the subnet basic RK rig. I will right click and select create digital asset. I'll then select my directory, rename it, and then save my asset. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go to the node tab and we'll change the default state. And this will have a particular value and this will be kinefx underscore underscore rig pose. This will cause the HDA to use the same viewer state as the rig pose node. So what is a viewer state? The viewer state allows you to customize how you interact with the node. And this is done through Python scripting. For more details, you can go to the help and scroll down to the Python section. And at the bottom of the page, you'll find a lot of sections explaining how to use Python viewer states. Houdini 18.5 has also added the ability to add handles to these states. Currently, these handles work as a SOPS level. And this is another reason why we're making this HDA at a SOP level. So now we'll look at how you can look up these states. I will open a new pane tab near my parameter editor window. This will be under Inspectors, Viewer State Browser. The Viewer State Browser allows you to edit, create and debug viewer states. I'll use the drop down menu to restrict the selection to SOP nodes. All of these viewer states will only work on a SOP level HDA. I'll then scroll down till I find the rig pose node. If I select the node, it will start to debug it. I can then expand the node. The first option is type. And we will reference this type in our HDA to use the viewer state. If I right click on this, it will allow me to edit the node. This will allow you to see how the functionality of this node has been built. But this is of course beyond the scope of this video. We can then return to the basic tab. I will be changing my outputs to two. This is so I can access both rig pose nodes. Enter the HDA node. I'll get an output node. I'll duplicate this node by holding Alt and dragging a new copy. I'll connect one of these to my main branch. And I'll connect the other to my IKFK pose. I'll change the output number on the IKFK post to 1. I can now exit this network, select the HDA itself, and in the viewport I can press enter. I can now pose my rig using either IK or FK without having to select individual rig pose nodes. Next I'll add parameters to my HDA interface. Re-enter the node and select one of the rig pose nodes. In this case, I select the IK node. For the IK controls, I only want to affect translation. I can therefore clear the values for my rotation and lock the rotation and the scale. I can then drag and drop the translation onto the HDA to add it as a parameter. The same process will apply for both the middle point and the effector. I'll then select the IK Chains node and drag the blend parameter to add it to the HDA. For the FK Rig Pose node, we'll focus on using the rotations. I'll zero out the translation on these nodes and I'll lock the translation and the scale. I'll then add the rotation to my HDA 
by dragging and dropping the parameter onto it. Finally, I'll neaten the interface by adding a couple of folders. One of these folders will be for the IK, and the other will be for the FK. We now have our rig contained in an HDA. We also have more easy access to controls. And with this you have the majority of what is needed for a rig setup.